Today, we're going to find the power allocated by the generator once again. Um, so the more the better, as I always say, um, in terms of examples. So let's crack on and do this example. So in this example, we're going to have a voltage generator. Uh, which we're going to call E1. Um, I have a generator here. There we go. <clears throat> we have this one here and then resistor here. Uh, now I'm going to have a node which we're going to call A uh, and then another resistor um, and then a node which I'm going to call B. Um, and then here is gonna we're gonna have another generator um, plus E minus, and then here at the bottom it's gonna close itself. We're gonna have a resistance again, and another resistance here. Uh, oh, and this node I'm gonna call this node C. Um, this generator, I'm going to call this E1. Uh, this resistance is going to be my R1, R, R, and R. And the problem this time is saying um, for the shield, uh, for the circuit below, we know that E1 is equal to E, so those two are equal, and they are, they are 12 volt. Um, R1 is actually 1 ohm. R, all those R here are 3 ohm. Find the power irrogated by the generator E1. Okay, so we have a generator E1. Um, we've got to find the power. So what I'm going to do here, um, well, you should be having something screaming in your head. What do we have? Two generators? Yeah, sure, they're equal and they're all voltage generators. So what should we be doing? Come on, I know you know it. Of course you know it. The superposition of effects. Um, just being, um, it's, it's interesting actually, because um, according to the Californian, to the Californian uh, Institute of Technology, one um, there is one in a three uh, chances that uh, the solution of a, of a certain problem is going to be given by the superposition of effects. Um, and as a matter of fact, there was one, <laughs> one guy who always, in the lecture that you can find online, uh, there's only one guy that uh, was you know, it was like screen all the time was saying superposition of effects because when <laughs> nobody was, you know, um, actually able to solve uh, with the other method, perhaps the other method didn't apply and so on. The the, the professor was saying um, was actually going to call that guy, and that guy was going to say superposition of effects, and that's basically it. So yeah, once again, we're going to be using the superposition of effects. This is something that should, as I said, should be screaming in your mind every time you see two generators, because you know uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a pretty good method and um, it's useful and most of the time it works. So I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna apply the. Superposition of effects. I'm just gonna write, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, to considering only E1, yeah, FX, buying bold FX. I'm just joking. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's, <laughs> I should not be making those jokes. They're weird and almost creepy in a certain way. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we're using the effects. I'm going to consider the E1 first, so only this one and not this one. Uh, and then we're going to do the other way around, so considering this one and not this one. So those are voltage generators. So what do we do when we do the superposition of effects considering only one generator when those are voltage generator? Well, voltage generator become short circuit. Um, so it's like saying, okay, um, this one is not, there's nothing here. So um, my new circuit will actually be this, going down I will have this resistance and this is still going to be my node A, it's going to be my resistance R and this is going to be my B and um, I'm not going to have anything here, okay. Uh, and I will have this one, and this will be my C. Uh, yeah, just like this. And this will be, you know, kind of short circuited. Uh, so I'm not gonna have anything here. Okay. Um, is E1 minus, um, I'm gonna say, okay, um, this current here flowing in this direction, I'm gonna call this E1 uh, first. Can we find it? Of course we can. Um, we know, wh what do we know? Well, oh, um, yeah, I didn't write it. Give by the lecture for the resistances. This is R1, as I said, R1 here. Uh, this is R and this is R. So, um, so again, um, I1 first, so this current here, uh, will basically be E1 over R total. But in order to, we have to find R total. Um, well, this is just because of, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is a voltage, um, we don't know R total, but you know, we, we, if you know the voltage, voltage, voltage over uh, resistance is gonna give us the uh, current, so Ohm's law. Um, so in order to find the RT, the total resistance, we can say, okay, uh, the total resistance will basically be R in parallel with R plus R1. So this will be R in parallel with R plus R1. So we can say RT, uh, if we substitute the values into this, uh, we know that, well, R1, should, uh, I should really be putting the values here. So R1 is uh, one ohm and RR, uh, RR, <laughs> three ohms each. So three ohms and three ohms. Uh, oh, and generator is 12 volt. There we go. So R total um, is three in parallel with three plus one. So R total is three times three over three plus three. When you see in parallel, remember, is the, is the product over the sum, so plus one. We have nine over six plus one. So <clears throat> this will be six, nine, uh, six. <clears throat> so RT will be 15 over 6 
um, and I don't really like to keep it as like this way. I want to keep it as um, a situation number. Uh, so if I divide um, 15 over 6, I get 2.5 ohm, of course. There was a professor that used to say, well, when I used to forget the to write like ohm, amperes, and so on, he used to say, like, if I just wrote or said that the exam light 2.5, it was it was going to say 2.5 what bananas, <laughs> like screaming at me. So I never forget the unit. Well, I sometimes do, but I generally not uh, in order to avoid to hear him uh, saying uh, like 2.5 watts bananas and so on. Anyway. Um, now we have everything to find our current I1 first. So I1 first, as I said, is E1, so the voltage over the total resistance, which makes sense, is Ohm's law. So I1 first is uh, 12, which is the voltage over the total resistance of 2.5. So I want first 12 over 2.5 is just 4.8 amps. Okay, so now we have found the, um, the current of the I1 first. Okay, um, for the C squared, and we're gonna find we're gonna have to do the same thing, but this time considering the other generator. So basically, this one, this E. Uh, and making this one a short circuit. So, do I have more space here? No, I do not. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna use another piece of paper. As I said before, they are recycled. Uh, they do look white uh, because they've been whitened. Um, they've been going through a whitening process. I don't know how they do it anyway, uh, but they do look white. Uh, this piece of paper, they're fine, uh, but they're actually recycled. Uh, not a, much an, <laughs> an environmentalist myself, but they do, they're cheaper, so. And they do something good uh, as well, so. Um, for the environment, I mean, so it just. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna consider only the generator uh, E here. So this one now, we're gonna consider this and I'm gonna consider this. We're just gonna become a short circuit. So, so, so. Whoops. Yeah. Ah, can I see? Ah, come on. Yeah, there we go. Always want to keep my pile of uh, paper, you know, all stuck, like piled up. Um, and if they're not like perfectly piled up, it I don't. It's like something that uh, bothers me. Like will be like Sheldon Cooper not sitting in this spot. See, you also get <laughs> Big Bang Theory references for free in this kind of lecture in this example anyway so my circuit is gonna be the same but you know without the generator here so this is still gonna be my node a still gonna be my resistance r1 and these are the resistance here i'm gonna have my node b just like before and then down here would have a resistance. It's gonna be connected here and here would have another resistance. And the voltage generator here, just like before, so plus E minus. Um, this one is gonna be my point C. Um, oh, yeah, bad, bad drawing, very bad drawing. Anyway, um, am I missing something? Oh, well, yeah. So now I uh, have to define, it, it, it was almost, it looks simple. 
uh, but this one is slightly more complicated. So this one is still gonna be my current as I defined before. So I defined it as um, I1 uh, first. So this one is gonna be I1 second because I'm using the superposition of facts. Um, but I have to define a few more uh, things first. Um, because the problem is actually asking us the power, but to get to the power, uh, it's a bit, a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna to have to define uh, this current flowing here in this direction uh, as I E minus one and this current flowing here in this direction as I R. So first thing first, just like before, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the um, R total, so the total resistance. Uh, why is that? Well, because yeah, just me. Let me just um, make it like plainly obvious and trivially obvious for you. So I total, it, which is the one I'm interested in in this moment before getting to I R and so on, uh, before getting to the other. Uh, I total will be given by E over R total. So the voltage over, or I total is in, uh, it's pretty obvious, but it will be this one, okay? So I total um, will actually be given, well, we have a generator of current, so it will be given by E over the total resistances, uh, which we have. Um, so, I need to put the letter here, okay. So in order to find the I total and then the other I, uh, I'm gonna find the R total first, which is why I was saying, yeah, let's find the R total. So this is plainly obvious why I'm doing this. So um, in order to find the R total, um, well, the R total is basically gonna be given by R1 in parallel with R plus R all in parallel with R. So this will be R1 in parallel with R plus R all in parallel with R. So if I substitute the values here, I get, ah, uh, I didn't bring in, well, R1 was, uh, what was R1? Uh, one ohm, three ohm, three ohm, three ohm, so, okay, so one ohm, three ohm, three ohm, three ohm, and 12 volts, was it, was it 12 volt? Yeah, 12 volt, e E1 was equal to uh, E, which was uh, 12 volt. Okay, so, <clears throat> so if I put, and numbers, if I plug numbers back into this, I get R1, which is one ohm, in parallel with uh, three, plus three, all in parallel with three. So RT, um, well, let's, uh, let's just calculate this. Okay, so this will be one times three over one plus three, all plus three, and all of this is gonna be in parallel with three. So RT is, um, well, will be three over four plus three in parallel with three. So RT will be four, three, 12 parallel with three. Um, so RT is going to be 15 over 4. Um, well, I didn't actually need the parentheses anymore, but anyway. Uh, in parallel with 3. So I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to um, bring it to, um, to basically a fraction. Well, not a fraction, to bring it to um, a decimal. So 15 over four will be 3.75. We will have 3.75 in parallel with three, 
which will give me 3.75 times 3 over 3.75 plus 3 so RT will be 3.75 times 3 is 11.25 and 3.75 plus, uh, plus 3 is just 6.75 so RT will actually be well these over 6.75 is uh, 1.66 so we'll just say 1.66 ohm So this is RT. Um, now we can find IT. So the I total, we have the total resistance, okay, which is um, 1.66 ohm. Now we can find the total current, which is this one, uh, straight out from the, um, the voltage source. So IT will be E, which is, uh, well, let me just rewrite this. E over RT, so IT will be E, which is 12 volt, over RT, which is 1.66. So, yeah, this is an arrow, okay? So, uh, 12 over 1.66 um, is 7.22 amperes. Okay, so now we have I total. Now, in order to find the other I, uh, we can use I total. Uh, so, well, first thing first. Um, the, first, the first one we're gonna find is gonna be IR, which is this one, which is fairly easy uh, because IR, we only, we have a, just, just don't think about all this, okay? Just pretend that this one is not here. Um, we are basically going to have a voltage source, like just consider this mesh, okay, this closed loop. We will basically have a voltage generator and a resistance. So the current here, IR, will be just E over R, so the voltage over the resistance, Ohm's law. So IR uh, will basically be E over R. So E, so IR will be E, which is 12 volt, over R, which is 3 ohm. So IR is simply 4 amperes. Now, in order to find uh, E minus 1, uh, I of E minus 1, we can say, okay, um, e, I of E minus 1 will basically be I total. It, it, it must be a subset of I total, right? So it's going to be I total minus the current that is flowing here because here is going to divide, the current is going to divide, it's going to split, going like, like this and like this. So since the current is going to split, I can say that E, uh, I of E minus 1 is just, you know, IT minus IR. So the total current minus the one that is uh, is going down here. So we can say that, um, as I said, uh, I of E minus 1 is I total minus IR. So I of E minus 1 minus 1 is just, uh, well, I total 7.22 amperes minus IR which was 4 so uh, I of E minus 1 will basically be uh, 7.22 minus 4 is just 3.22 ampere now we're getting very very close uh, because this is the this is the end game. No, I'm sorry. Uh, this is I1. This is basically, yeah, this is basically it because we're going to find I1 uh, second. Um, and uh, this is going to be E for uh, this part of the superposition. So this other part, which was the one before, is gone, is ready. Uh, we already found I1 uh, first. Now we're going to find I1 second. Then we're going to put those together. And then we're going to find the power. 
which is going to be pretty easy and straightforward. So now we have everything to find i1 second. So i1 second will basically be, well, will be um, negative i of e minus 1 times r over r plus r1. So e minus 1. Yeah, so i1 second will be this one, so 3.22, negative 3.22, actually, because, you know, they're going in the opposite direction, so. Um, so negative 3.22 times 3 over 3 plus 1. So i1 second, that will be negative uh, 3.22 times 3 over 4. So i1 second is going to be negative 9.66 over 4, just multiply those two. And then I'm going to divide those two and I'm going to get negative uh, 2.41 amperes. Okay, um, now I have, I, ha I can basically find the real i, which was basically, well, I didn't, I didn't say it, but this was, was supposed to be i1, like the real i1. I'm going to just say this. This was the real i1, okay. I'm going to find i1. I'm going to say, okay, i1. I just, I'm going to use, as I said, uh, I'm going to use the fact that of the superposition of effects. So it's going to say, okay, the real i1 is going to be i1 first plus i1 second. So as I said, uh, the real i1 is going to be i1 first plus i1 second. Ooh, I would, ah. Uh, yeah so <laughs> sorry about that so i1 y1 first plus i1 second so i1 is uh well i1 first is 4.8 ampere 4.8 uh plus we have oh luckily we have uh, the other one in this page so well it would be plus negative 2.41 ampere because it was going in the opposite direction compared to this one so um I1 will just be 4.8 minus 2.41. So I1 is just uh, 2.39 ampere. Now we have everything and we can find the power uh, which was asked by uh, to us by the problem. And it was saying find the power irrigated by the generator E1. So the power irrogated by the generator E1, which I'm going to call P, which stands for power. Yeah, it shouldn't, as I said, I shouldn't really be making this joke. Anyway, so the power is going to be E1 times I1. So the generator, the generator, the voltage generator times the current, which we have found. So all the thing, all the um, messy thing that uh, all the struggle we have been going through was just to find E1. Yeah, I'm sorry, I1. Um, so P is going to be E1 uh, times I1. You have just substitute the values. I get 12 volt times 2.39 ampere. Uh, 2.39 ampere. So uh, the power irrogated will be 28.68 watts. So yeah, that's it for this problem as well. As you can basically see, it's not, uh, well, it's not, it's not complicated. You can get uh, used to uh, bit by bit um, by, you know, doing exercise after exercise after exercise after exercise. <laughs> Uh, don't lazily watch me doing them, uh, but you know you can watch as many videos as you want. But in the end, you gotta do, you gotta try to 
solve problems yourself and sort circuits yourself because otherwise you're never gonna you're never gonna get used to it uh but you know it's not something impossible it was asking you know the problem was asking the power erogated by the generator e1 which was this one those two were equal we knew all the resistances uh, so we considered first only the generator e1 then we consider only the generator uh, e which in, with which we went into a bit of trouble because of all those resistances and we found we said okay we're gonna get here to find this current here a bit by bit so we found the i total the ir then the e uh, which i call e minus one i could call this e minus a which was this uh, for these, which stands for these mesh here instead, it's fine, it's the same, it doesn't matter, just the name of variable. And then in the end, we found the i1 second, so this current here, and we summed those two, and in the end, we found we finally found the power. So, as I said, nothing difficult, nothing that it can't be done, uh, and all of this can really be done, but. Um, you know, you really gotta get used to it. You, you, when you see something like a problem like this, you really gotta say, okay, just stop for a second, think about what you're gonna do, uh, think about your your plan, your your action plan, your plan of action, and say, okay, I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that and so on. Well, but as a rule of thumb, generally, when you see two generator, most of the time, I strongly suggest you to use the superposition of effects. Um, it works, and uh, yeah, it's uh, most of the time it it totally is gonna help you solve many many problems along the way. So yeah, that's. Um, that's it for, for this problem as well. Cheers and goodbye.